local to East London. The first gallery was just round the corner from here on 23, 24 Shoreditch High Street. I used to call it the first art gallery in East London, as in if you was in the city of London walking east into East London and Hackney and Shoreditch, the first gallery that you'd come across an artist would have been me sitting on my doorstep on the left hand side. Historically the city of London is where all the shipping merchants started off with all their insurance companies for business and the banks and everything set up so it's a complete juxtapose compared to historically what the slums of East London have been because of the uh, prevailing winds blowing this way and making this area smell more than West London so yeah it really uh, you know is a difference but what happened was there's there so many empty properties that the art the prostitutes moved in then the artists moved in then the nightclubs and the bars and everyone else moved in so it was because of that vacancy that there was a space for the artists to move in i started off my first gallery with no permission apart from my own and uh, it was great because obviously you can get on with it and do it uh, it started off with a flame and a baked bean tin and it got a little bit more brighter and elaborate elaborate so there was about 15 light bulbs around me at one stage landlord drove past one day and saw this and uh, brought the evies in on me and ripped everything down. He wanted to get rid of me and I said to him, no, no, what are you up to? He was like, I'm making an internet cafe. I was like, well, let me help you out and I can make a art gallery. Egotistically, I've claimed that I've produced one of the most important pieces of art that you please contest and no one's come forward yet. There was a, an Indian girl that lived out in Dubai that was over here doing her MA at Goldsmiths and uh, she was writing her thesis and she was doing it a lot about street art. Seeing that the BBC had just called me a street artist and the time out as well, she was quite interested in me and wanted to interview me. And the word that she threw out there for me was uh, deterritorialized. And I take that into the contents of there's a territory and something belongs in that territory and if you take that out of that territory then it's been deterritorialized. It's uh, and it's sort of what street art is. It's being on for, to me, it's being on this side of the gallery door. So everyone's got an opportunity to, you know, experience it and see it. But there's a lot of levels to it, obviously. So I start with do you want to see one million? It's an open question and I think a lot of people do want to see one million and I have visually captured one million dollars. And it's a, a C-type print, it's four foot by six foot big, and it's a matrix of one million little US dollar symbols. So it was a challenge to get one million dollar symbols onto uh, a print, but in the creation of it, what I was trying to do was make a million the smallest it could be viewed by the naked human eye. I could have made this print bigger, obviously, but if I made it any smaller, then the dollars wouldn't be there anymore. It would just be a gray rectangle. So that was one of the levels of the thinking behind it. It was, I'd never seen a million of one thing in one place. I don't know if, have you seen it yet? You haven't seen it yet. And it's a unique opportunity. And after taking it out on the street and seeing people's reactions to it, it was uh, like, wow, look at this fucking piece of art. It's amazing, it really is. By nature, the people that go into the gallery are obviously going there to explore art and they might be already clued up about art and they might have a, you know, their views and opinions about it before they arrive. When you're out on the street, it's bang, surprise, here you go, what do you think? And it has always been important for me, like what we've just done, stopping two blokes who don't really go into art galleries. I, you know, I did ask them that question there. Asking what people think about my piece of artwork there. Yeah, I mean, the concept's really interesting. Um, when you go up and see it, you're like, oh, wow. It's called Do You Want to See One Million? 
and it's a matrix of a million little US dollar symbols. So have a look and uh, see, see. I'll ask you some questions about it. It's one of those things that you look at, but you, it makes you question what the, the idea behind the whole piece was. Well, first of all, how does that make you feel? Um, I mean, from far away, you can't exactly see that it's a dollar sign when you go in close, and then you can actually see that it's a dollar sign. It's different. Not my personal look, but yeah, it's cool. Part of my work is I make photographs that you can't photograph, yeah. if you get that. So sure, you can take a picture of this, but well, it you're won't really make sense to, to the viewer, innit? Yeah, I've got more work like that. What, what do you think about that sort of concept, the, the non-transmittable non image? It's, it's something that's more like puzzles your mind. If you're going to say like, you can you can fix it. If that's what if that's what you're aiming for, then it works. It works. Initially, I just thought it was a grey uh, rectangle. Um, I thought it was going to be optical illusion, and then obviously it was. When I got closer, I kind of saw the uh, the dollar signs. Uh, I think it's a great idea what he's doing. Yeah. I don't know what the top is, but if I can always put bread on my table to feed me and my daughter now, that, you know, I've reached the top. 